I'm here in the House of Commons, where Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain passed the policy of appeasement. After World War I, the nations of Europe were t tired and weary and did not want another war. When countries such as Italy and Germany became aggressive and started to invade neighbouring countries to build up their colonies, countries like Britain and France hoped to keep peace with the policy of appeasement. This meant they tried to make Germany and Hitler happy. They hoped by meeting his demands he would be satisfied and there wouldn't be another war. Unfortunately, this policy of appeasement backfired. It only made Hitler bolder. It also gave him the time to build up his army. Winston Churchill had been a strong opposition towards this policy and he became Prime Minister in 1940 and led Britain through most of the war. I snuck across to Berlin and I'm now in Hitler's bunker. Hitler had always hated the peace treaty signed at the end of World War One and called it a diktat, a dictated peace. He felt Germany was not to blame for the war and many people in Germany agreed with him. Once he was fewer of Germany, he started to break the rules of the Treaty of Versailles, firstly increasing military, building up armaments needed for war and eventually invading other countries that once belonged to Germany, first Czechoslovakia. Britain allowed this, as he wanted to follow the policy of appeasement and try and delay war. Hitler had gone with breaking the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. Where would he stop now? Back to Blighty now. World War II broke out when Hitler invaded Poland on the 1st of September 1939. The policy of appeasement had failed. Britain and her empire united with the USSR and eventually the USA to make up the Allied forces who fought against the Axis powers of Germany, Italy and Japan. The world was back at war, and this time on a global scale. Many of the battles listed in your project were planned and directed from the war rooms behind me. Chamberlain was replaced by Winston Churchill in 1940, who led the country to victory in 1945. V-Day.